All right, we are back. We are talking about running with your dog. Uh, if you are a runner or you want to start running or walking or jogging, let me know if that is you. But my name is Erica Bowling. I am the owner and founder of Northeast Canine Conditioning. I love taking sport dogs and working dogs and turning them into elite canine athletes. And I, um, I love to exercise. Well, no, I take that back. <laughs> I don't, necessarily, I don't necessarily love to exercise. I love how I feel after I'm done exercising. Um, I struggle with motivation, getting out the door. And I'll tell you, when I started running with my dog, everything changed. Um, it's just a great bonding experience. Uh, he exercises, I exercise. And another thing that I love about exercising with my dog is that instead of trying to squeeze in his exercise and my exercise in the gym is I just do it at the same time. So what I want to share with you today is... Um, five common things that I see that people are doing that can potentially really create issues, create dangers, um, potential injury, even death um, for, for your dog. And so there, there are a lot of, I can, I can talk on and on about this topic, but I would say these are kind of the five of the most common that I've seen. So the first one, all right. The first one is I see people going out and they are basically saying, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to go do a couple miles with my dog, but the dog is not fit. The dog is overweight. The dog is un, um, unhealthy. Maybe the dog has um, health issues. Uh, the dog doesn't have the stamina. And the, the, the owner may say, okay, you know, I'm only going for a mile or two. And maybe in the backyard, the dog is running and running and seems like it has a lot of energy. But, um, but, you know, if you don't condition these dogs, I'm going to talk more about that in, in just a minute. Um, if your dog is basically a couch potato seven days a week and then you have spring vacation and you decide you're going to go on a 10 mile hike with your dog, your dog is not conditioned for that. And so um, it's great to get out and, and, and go exercise. I know um, those of you who are runners or you used to be runners, um, a lot of runners I know are like type A personalities. <laughs> And, you know, they'll be like, yeah, you know, super goal oriented and motivated. And, you know, they have the best interest in their dog, but the dog hasn't been properly conditioned. Um, so this is one thing is um, you really need to make sure that you're starting out. Your dog is good body weight, good overall body condition. Um, your dog doesn't have any health issues that might, you know, you might run into problems. And there are health issues that you don't necessarily, um, you, you can see a dog that looks totally healthy. And then any of you have dealt with like Doberman's cardiomyopathy, um, you know, you can have a very healthy dog that look, it looks like, you know, the epitome of health and they have heart issues and they go out and exercise and they fall over dead. Um, and I've heard so many stories of dogs, two, three, four years old of this happening. So even if your dog looks and acts healthy, I would say, make sure you go get your dog checked out and make sure your dog is in good condition. If your dog needs to lose some weight, if your dog's not, um, you know, ready for it, well, start slowly, start with walking. But, um, but I see a lot of people, um, they don't do it running with their dog on a regular basis. And then they just go out and they'll go bicycle. They'll say, Hey, we're going to go out. And all of a sudden they're bicycling with their dog for, for two, three miles. And the dog's never really done any kind of exercise like that before. So, um, so that is one of the common things I see people do. Okay. Number two, the next thing that people do is, um, running with dogs, with puppies, with adolescent dogs that are, um, they're still, physically immature, they're still growing. And um, not to say that a puppy can't run, you know, yeah, you want your puppy to run and exercise. But usually for puppies and growing dogs, you're looking at more kind of like self directed play, you're looking at a puppy determining when they want to run when they want to rest when they want to go lay down. Um, I'm not going to take a puppy and then just go out and go jogging for five miles with a puppy. And um, even especially some of the large breed dogs, they may be six, seven, eight, months old and they look like, and they may act like an older dog. But, um, if your dog is still growing and developing, um, the, the, the issue with the running is, is that kind of repetitive concussive, the repetitive type of activity. So I'm not saying if you're going to, you know, if you have a nine month old dog and you jog out, you know, to the corner and back or go to the mailbox, but I'm talking like, if you're grabbing your bike and you're going to go out for miles, you're going to go out and you're going to keep that dog at a steady pace and you're running them on, on cement on pavement you don't want to be doing that with a dog um, unless they are healthy and they are physically mature. And also ideally you should, uh, if at all possible um, you want, especially if you're doing longer distances and a lot of that repetitive type activity, you want to do it on softer surfaces. 
And that's the same for us. You know, if I run on a hard surface, I feel it in my lower back. It's just all that wear and tear. So, um, so if you have a puppy, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, hold off and wait, um, you know, take them walking, take them hiking, you know, let them, let them set the pace, you know, do, do stuff in a safe area, you know, off leash, um, running where they can be safe. But if you're going to be out there just, you know, you know, pounding the miles in, um, puppies aren't the ones to be taken along with you. Um, so that is something that I do see calm and people are just doing too much and pushing the puppies too hard. Okay. And this kind of goes hand in hand with this. Um, but even, even for the older dogs is, um, advancing too quickly, going from zero to 100 overnight. And this also kind of goes back to the very first thing that I talked about, about dogs not being in shape when you're starting out. So, um, so this would be, there's a, there's two aspects to this. One would be taking the dog that's not, you know, in shape. And all of a sudden you're going out and you're expecting them to do five miles with you. Um, the other thing is if you have a dog and you've been working with them regularly and consistently, but then like you're, you can't keep up with your running. So maybe you're running three, four days a week. And then all of a sudden you take a month off or you're running three days a week. And then you go weeks where you're not doing anything with your dog. So those are kind of two areas of advancing too quickly. One is, you know, your dog's not ready. You've not properly prepared your dog for that kind of distance. And the other one is you've prepared them, but you've not been consistent. And so your dog's gotten deconditioned. So I would say the best thing to do is if you um, look at some of the online training programs for people like beginner, look at beginner running programs like couch to 5k, um, a beginner program, you know, somebody who's not a runner and how to build up to running your first 5k, how to build up and run your first 10k and look at how they build up slowly incrementally. And you do a couple days a week, you have your rest days, um, you'll have your easy days, you'll have maybe one day a week, you're building more distance and it's gradual and you want to be doing it. When I'm, do when I'm building cardio with my dog and I want to increase distance and increase intensity, and, oh, and this can also be on the treadmill. If you're, you know, building up endurance on the treadmill. Um, but what I like to do, I found with my own dog, if I'm only doing it also for myself, if I'm only doing it two days a week, we, my dog just doesn't progress. Um, he's like stagnant. His, his cardio doesn't get any better, his endurance and, and in mine too. I found that when I started doing three days a week, I started to see improvement and we were able to advance more quickly. And then for both of us. And then I found that when we we're running um, four to five days a week, then we, I really start seeing an improvement. But again, it, it has to match the, it has to be a pro age appropriate for your dog. It also has to fit the, uh, the current fitness and health level of your dog. And you want to build up to it. You're not going to start, you know, right off the bat doing five days a week. You may start one day a week and then over weeks, build up two, build up three. And this is going to be a period over months that you are building up. But I do say, um, you know, if it's just one to two days a week, you're really not doing it enough to get that body to really adapt physiologically over time to get better, better, stronger, faster. And for the, you know, the heart to benefit and just getting better and stronger, the cardiovascular system. Okay. The number four is, I've seen this happen a lot. And I've seen this happen with really experienced people too, is missing signs of heat distress. And your dog can be suffering um, from the heat. It doesn't have to be hot outside for your dog to be suffering from the heat. And a lot of times dogs will be showing um, heat distress and maybe they're showing avoidance behaviors. They're, um, they're uh, shade seeking, seeking shade. Um, my dog, when he starts to get hot, he kind of, his energy level goes and he actually, when, when we first started running and I was building up the distance, if it was kind of hot and humid, I was in South Carolina um, Knox would kind of get to a point where he would slow down and he would start looking back at me and I could tell like, he just really didn't want to keep going forward. He was getting hot. And I've seen and heard stories of so many people missing these, these signs of the dog, it, the heat is starting to affect the dog. And there's a lot, you know, a lot of signs. It's not just the panting, but you know, looking at the demeanor of your dog, like I said, avoidance behaviors is one um, uh, shade seeking where they're kind of dragging you off to the shade. And, um, and these are things that I, I have a friend of mine, um, I believe this happened in Maine and he was driving down the road and he saw this person on the side of the road with a young, I think it was like a golden retriever and the dog was collapsed on the side of the road. And these people were running like out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know how far they were from home. They had no water. They had nothing to help the dog. And the dog was going into a uh, heat stroke. 
and um, they were totally unprepared. The dog was out of shape and um, they, they missed the early signs and just kept pushing the dog. I've seen it with people riding bicycles. And just because your dog wants to keep going with you, these dogs that are really driven and they're pack animals, they want to be with you. Just because your dog is like trying to keep up with you and they, they can run next to your bicycle, it doesn't mean that your dog physically that you should be doing that. And I've seen so many people where, you know, the dog is like really just kind of dragging behind them on the bike, you know, when they're on the bicycle or running and the dog is giving all kinds of signs of distress. And the, um, the owner is oblivious just because it feels cool outside to you doesn't mean your dog can't overheat. Um, also be aware, um, as your dogs get older, their body just doesn't regulate the temperature as well as when they're younger. Um, so be aware as you've got an older dog, they may not deal with the heat like they used to. And also be aware that humidity has a big impact. It may be 70 degrees out and low humidity and your dog is fine. And then the next day you may have 70 degrees and it's higher humidity and your dog's really struggling. And then um, our fifth one that I wanted to mention here, the common mistake that people made, um, and this kind of, this is, these are all kind of interconnected, is not, not hydrating, not hydrating enough before, during, and after when they're running. So, um, and this can totally directly be connected to when they're suffering from the heat and heat distress and heat stroke. So when your dog is even the littlest, slightest bit of um, dehydrated, your dog is at a higher risk of suffering from the heat. So one of the things you really want to make sure you do is have plenty, you know, really hydrate your dog beforehand. And, and it could be, you know, if you have a big day coming up, a big event, um, you know, if you do, if you're dealing with heat and humidity, you may you know, if you have something big coming, you may start hydrating your dog, um, you know, extra paying extra attention to that days ahead of time. But um, having your dog, make sure your dog is hydrated before you even do any activities. And I would say if you think your dog is even the slightest bit dehydrated, like don't work them, get your dog hydrated. Because when they're dehydrated, they're, they're not going to, their body is not going to be able to regulate and, and handle that heat as easily. The other thing that I see people doing is that they think that um, they shouldn't give the dog water while they're exercising. And, um, and they also think, these are some misconceptions, they think that you should not give a dog cold water. And so there's some research that shows that when the dogs are drinking cold water, it actually helps to cool their body down faster. And when your dog is hydrating and drinking that cold water, it's helping them cool down. So if you're working your dog and you're waiting until the end of the run and your dog's getting hot and starting to overheat and you wait until the very end of the run to give your dog water, you just missed opportunities to help your dog do a better job of, of handling that heat. And so it's really, really important, especially if you're doing any kind of distance at all, is to take water with you. And um, if I do anything more than, um, well, with Bachi, I, my dog, Bachi, he's going to be 12 years old in a few months. And we only do like a mile and a half and we walk, we don't jog. We only do like a mile and a half. He's older. He doesn't handle the heat as well as he used to. And if I just take him for a mile walk, I take water with me and I stop and I give him water in the middle of our one mile walk. Now with Knox, he's younger. Um, and, um, you know, I, I will carry water with me. Maybe I don't stop after a mile but I will periodically stop. Like I'll go and halfway into my run, whatever my distance, no, I'll stop. I'll give him some water and I'll kind of monitor him. I may stop again and give him water. And I can totally tell when we stop and he gets the water, he, he's, he's more fresh. I can totally see a difference when he's starting to get a little bit hot where maybe three, four miles into a run and I stop for a few minutes, I give him some water and then we get going. I can totally see a difference in his energy. And then also afterwards, make sure that you hydrate. And if you've had a really, you know, a, a big activity, a big weekend, um, your dog could be suffering from the heat for days after. And even if your dog looks pretty good, your dog could be suffering the effects and be, you know, dehydrated. And you may have to replenish those fluids and you, your dog may be recovering for a few days afterwards. And so the, the hydration is not just um, right after that day especially if you're working your dog hard. So hydration may be ongoing. Another thing that I'll just kind of throw in here with the hydration is uh, for post-exercise recovery. And this would be, you know, for the dogs that are really working hard, um, whether it's training, exercise, sport, or competition, or running with your dog, 
is um, with the exercise uh, supplements, like post-exercise, when you're recovering from exercise, um, I use things like um, Animate Glycocharge. Um, there's Canine Super, flu uh, super Fuel. <laughs> and there's another one out there. Uh, Vertex is another one. And research shows that if you give them that, um, that supplement within, say, 20 minutes or so, 20 to 30 minutes, within 20 minutes, ideally, right after exercise, your dog is going to absorb and make better use of that than if you, you can still give it to them an hour later, but their body's just not going to use it as well and absorb it as well as if you give it sooner. So, um, so that's kind of that post-exercise recovery and hydration is a big part of that. The last thing um, that I also want to mention about hydrating and body temperature is that research shows um, there was a research on search and rescue dogs and they monitored their body temperature before, during and after searches. And they found that when the dogs, um, when the dogs were done searching, so the activity like had stopped, their body temperature continued to rise eight, 10, 12 minutes or more afterwards. So be aware, cooling down your dog is really, really important. And when you stop running, and you put your dog in the crate or back in the car, when you stop running, your dog's body temperature may continue to go up for another you know, 10, 12 minutes or more. And so make sure you give your dog plenty, plenty of time to start cooling down before you, you know, put them in the car and drive home, right? So that's really important. So, um, so those are the five t tips. If you wanna know more about things like, um, hydration, post-exercise recovery, if you want to know more about um, heat stroke and heat distress, if you go to the Northeast Canine Conditioning Facebook business page and click on videos, every Friday at 8.30 p.m., we go live on the Northeast Canine Conditioning Facebook business page, and we've got hundreds of hours. We've, I think we've got, we're probably getting close to 230 episodes, and um, in those video replays, if you go to videos, I have multiple videos on warming up and on cooling down your dog. I have um, videos on working with puppies and fitness for puppies. I also have things dealing with heat stroke, heat, you know, um, dealing with um, heat distress, cooling down your dog, and check out those videos if you haven't already. And, and definitely come join us uh, Friday for our live shows. I would love to have, love having you here live. And then also I have one last slide I wanted to pop up here for you. Um, if you're um, really interested in canine fitness and, and you want to know more about how to keep your dog fit and healthy and you know, really take a deep dive into all these different topics that um, we mentioned today and many, many more, fitness from puppies all the way through senior dogs. Um, if you have a passion for sport and working dogs and you want to know more about how to help them work more effectively and efficiently and just reach peak performance, um, check out our elite canine athlete program, which can lead to becoming a certified canine athlete specialist. And that you can download the brochure at elitecanineathlete.com. That's elite canine, the letter K, the number nine, elite canine athlete.com. And you can download the program brochure, look it over. And there's an application or you just message me if you're interested. And normally what, what I do is I set up a one-on-one -on -one chat with you and talk about your interests, your needs, and your goals to see if this is indeed the best program for you. Because we have about four different programs. Um, this is our most comprehensive program. For some people, this is the perfect program. For others, um, one of our others might be a better fit. So um, check it out. Go to our website or um, go to elitecanineathlete.com. Download the brochure. Look it over. If it looks like something of interest, uh, reach out to me. And I'd be happy to uh, talk with you about the program and all the different um, options within the program for joining us. Thank you so much for joining again every Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Join us on the Northeast Canine Conditioning Facebook business page or catch us um, as we're streaming elsewhere or watch us in the video replay. So thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you next Friday. Bye bye for now.